Good evening and welcome to this session of the live learning classes conducted by the Board of Studies of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. It's once again great to be here this evening addressing you all. So before we start, let's quickly invoke Sahana Bhavato, Sahana Bhunakto, Sahaviryam Karavavahe, Tejas Vinavadhi Tamastu, Mahavit Visavahe, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Today, we are going to start a new topic. As you can see, it is called Accounts of Companies, right? Before I begin, in case uh, uh, any queries are there, I will just take it and then I will go to it. So I see only good evening messages are there and Karthik is greeting me in Tamil. Thank you, sir. Very good. And uh, good evening, Mr. Shankaran and others. So we have a lot of people coming here. Welcome. Let's hope we have a nice, interesting session this evening. And uh, so today we are going to see the provisions of Chapter 9 relating to accounts of companies. It also has an accounts rules along with that. The company's accounts rules 2014. As future chartered accountants, this topic, chapter 9 and chapter 10, would be of immense importance and interest to you because this is what binds you as a member when you are acting as a CFO of a company or a finance manager or whatever. This, these are to be kept in mind. Right. Mr. Rutraj Honmane says, we are very good. Uh, good evening, sir. I'm very excited for today's topic. I'm not very, I'm not able to bring a, a lot of excitement for accounts because accounts basically boring. But then let us see. So excitement is something that we can create only in ourselves. Hmm? So let us see. Okay. Good. So we have this topic again can be divided into these concepts. First of all, we'll have to see what are the types of accounts to be maintained. So we have books of account. Then there are relevant books and papers sort of backed up. And the financial statement itself means books of account are your ledgers, your cash book, whatever. And the books and papers are the vouchers, invoices, supporting documents. That becomes the books and papers. Then when all this is consolidated, I'm sorry, when I've used the word consolidated, when all this is summarized and brought into one concept, that becomes the balance sheet and profit and loss account, the so-called financial statement, how it is done. So there are strict rules for non-corporate entities. There is no legal legislative prescription. There is no law prescribing how accounts are to be maintained, etc. Except uh, such of those non-corporate entities, non-corporate means not company, like firm, LLP, sole proprietary, society. These are all non-corporate. Hmm? Yeah, society is non-corporate. Be careful. Society registered under the Society's Registration Act in Maharashtra, Tamil Nadu, or wherever. It's a non-corporate. Why? Because it is not a body corporate. Okay, anyway, the point is, these entities have no big control, except where they are coming under the tax audit, the Income Tax Act prescribes the maintenance of books, 44AB, AD, all that. Hmm? Right? So, this law, the 2013 Act, has introduced something very um, Interesting called reopening and recasting of accounts. Right. Also, it 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 gives facility to companies to go for voluntary revision of accounts. Revision, they can revise it. So this also with this topic we are going to talk about a very important body, the National Financial Reporting Authority. National Financial Reporting Authority. And then we'll be seeing how the audit report is to be prepared, then how the board's report is to be prepared and all that stuff. Then lastly, 
corporate social responsibility very important then members right to receive the financial statement and lastly internal audit so this will be the broad manner of in which we will be seeing this topic give me one minute every company shall prepare books of account books of account friends i have highlighted it there you can see the highlighting there right why i have highlighted it because books of account just like mothers in law correct mothers in law not mother in laws so it is not books of accounts sometimes many people wrongly call it books of accounts suggestion even in my slides if such a spelling is used it is inadvertent or it might have been so used in the companies act where i have to follow what the companies act has given but correct grammar is books of account books of account book of account books of account. Sorry. and other books and papers books are there papers are there and financial statement these are all defined books of account defined books and papers defined and of course the financial statement for every financial year so you have to maintain books of account those books of account should be supported by books and papers ledgers i mean sorry vouchers supportings and financial statement at the end of the year you should prepare a consolidated summarized balance sheet profit and loss account notes and accounts etc etc all this is there section 128 makes it mandatory so the idea is at the end of the year you know the, you, the shareholders are given their money to you so at the end of the day you have to give them a, a, a summary of the transactions done by the company in an accurate and systematic manner prime immemorial it is the chartered accountants and the accountants who have been responsible for maintaining the books of account though of course today we have other professionals also still right from as, as i was telling time immemorial we have been the uh, people who are maintaining the books of account in, in fact etc etc i'm sure all of you are aware that uh, luca pasioli luca pasioli mr devraj you are not concentrating on the lecture you are wasting time asking questions when i started this lecture i showed this that is the same chapter in your book also 9 today and okay so the books chapter 9 in your board of studies material also chapter 9 okay books of account accounts of co- accounts of companies that is a topic hmm? that's what i'm teaching to today company law you'll find the institute material chapters follow the company law chapters so chapter 9 here become chapter 9 there also means chapter 9 in companies act automatically chapter 9 in board of studies material. please do not uh, i think 6 uh, was covered by me now 7 and 8 not covered yet 7 and 8 will be covered by other faculty later so don't worry hmm? so i have i have not conducted it to my knowledge 7 is dividend i will not be covering it 8 i think we i'll be covering but that will come later now we are taking up books of account and audit accounts and it is a totally different uh, topic okay now so luca pasioli was the man who sort of designed the method of counting which today we call the double entry system of accounting luca pasioli was the um, not exactly the accountant he was a priest he was a catholic priest i think he was a benedictine monk uh, who was you no know, in those days the monks were the only people you know the catholic monks were the only people who were educated they they could write in latin and they could count they could do numerical so most people were uneducated in in the renaissance period when luca pasioli uh, was there so he the, the, he was the um, he was the accountant for the borgias they were called borgias famous uh, italian family he was the, i'm sorry the medicis the medicis uh, the medicis he was the accountant for the medicis the medicis were the ultimate bankers of those days 
and they they had a huge empire from venice and florence they used to go all over the world and uh, trade and so they had a huge banking and trading business so this business was account the accounting of this was handled by a group of monks one of whom was luca pasioli who decided that it will be more accurate or i can assure the accuracy of my accounting if i use double entry system of accounting or bookkeeping as we call it, double entry system of bookkeeping or accounting bookkeeping is the very idea of books are there the books of account whoever keeps the book of account books of account is called bookkeeper they are called bookkeepers bookkeeping is one of the basic jobs today none of us do just bookkeeping neither you nor not even you in your even at the earlier jobs that you do as a fresh chartered accountant you will not be actually maintaining the books of account. what you would be doing is there will be a bot or there will be a software that would be at the transactional level it will be collecting the data and using the logic of double entry it will be representing it in the ledger your job would be verifying it once for accuracy and then seeing that everything is in order and then clearing it so that it will get updated in erp and goes on that, that is that will be your job even at a very very lower level the higher levels we do not do anything on accounting we we are more into interpretation analysis and interpretation of the financial statements okay and advisory that is our but still we need to understand what is the basic principles of law which operate here so they are not only saying it should be double entry system of accounting but also on accrual basis so point i am making here is you have learned accrual basis when you joined your school possibly when you joined your school or some of you who did science group and have come to do ca may not have done it in school i am sure somewhere in cpt somewhere somebody would have taught you accrual because without accrual there is no accounting accrual is where we ensure that income or expense is accounted when it is income will be accounted when it is earned expense will be accounted when it is incurred I'm using words very carefully income will be accounted when it is earned means not when it is received and expense will be accounted when they are incurred not when it is actually paid actual payment is another entry but for bringing it into my books i need to be sure that it has actually been incurred the liability has accrued that the liability has become real i owe money to that fellow then i have to bring it into the books similarly when he owes money to me 100% then i have to bring that income into the books okay of course the this is the uh, this is a very large wrong um, you know concept i don't want to go too deep into it from the foundation of accrual basis a whole edifice of accounting has been built i'm merely mentioning that the law has given recognition to these two accrual basis and double entry why is this so important because earlier i mean before these sections were there in the 1956 act also you had a similar section it is not as if this is something new to 2013 act but before that there was a time when there was no prescription so you had a balance sheet and all that but there was no accrual basis prescription so which meant only the auditor was ensuring that there was accrual basis the directors had no liable responsibility to understand it so when the auditor came he ensured that it was on accrual basis because he was bound by the accounting standards at that time prevailing subsequently the ministry and realized that the duty of maintaining books of account yeah can you tell me it is whose duty to maintain books of account who is responsible for maintaining books of account closing them preparing the financial statement whose duty is it i want you to give me an answer whose duty is it to maintain books of account close them every year prepare the financial statement whose duty in the meantime ashwin give gb gives the wrong spelling for pasioli it's not fabio it's pasioli that is correctly given by shishil kumar barik is this luca pasioli he was the catholic priest management is a white term i want something more correct uh, parthratna makes a parthratna makes a very good point 
It is not the CA. CA means the auditor's job. It is not the auditor's job to maintain the books of account, to ensure that they are on accrual basis, according to prevalent. He has to verify whether it is so, but not his duty. And uh, you are using the convenient word management. I think the word management is not defined anywhere in the Companies Act, whereas something else is defined. Collectively, what are they called? Management is a duty, but management is a very big uh, uh, term. No? Some of you have put accountant, or to use the North Indian um, term, so Muninji, called Muninji. Hmm? In South India, is part of Tamil Nadu, we call him Kanakapulai, the man who maintains the accounts, okay? Kanakapulai. So, the Muninji, no, definitely not the Muninji. See, the responsibility, the legal binding is on the board of directors. Suppose there is a multiple choice question, hmm? and I were giving you four options, one of which is management, the other is board of directors and uh, thing and CFO, okay, and none of the above. If you had selected CFO or management, you are wrong. The correct answer is board of directors. Board of directors. Okay, this is a duty of the board of directors to maintain the books of account. Not only that, they should ensure that it it is maintained on accrual basis and according to the double entry system of bookkeeping. Okay. Those charged with governance is a nice word, Ms. Kiran, but uh, who are they? Basically, the board of directors. Okay. Board of directors. Now, of course, management is a layman's term that you can use. Some lay, lay people who have no knowledge of finance and law may use words like management and all. You as a professional should always remember that it is the board of directors who are responsible. They have been appointed by the members. They owe a duty to the members, to every stakeholder to maintain the books of account properly, close them and all. Failure to do that will attract liability. Failure to do that will attract liability. Who, to who? To who the board of directors? Okay. For example, CFO will become liable only in a peculiar situation. I'll explain. If your designation is CFO, it's okay. But if you are not been appointed as a CFO under the Companies Act, okay, so know about it. CFO can become liable provided there is a condition to be satisfied, right? See, suppose you join a company as GM Finance. Hmm? Above you, there are two people. They can catch you because you are not you are a chartered accountant, no doubt, but you are going to be responsible only for the accounting department. You are not, you are not legally bound. I'll tell you how. They, you can't make everybody binding because it's hard accountant, you won't be binding. Won't. What are you going to keep in mind, uh, Parth? Uh... <laughs> Correct. Yeah. So, books of account defined, as I told you, it includes uh, records maintained in respect of all sums of money received and expended. See here, see the old Lana 1956 Act. Now that was using these words, right? They are bringing it here. All sums of money received and expended by a company, and matters relations to which receipts and expenditure took place. So they take place. That is a little confusing. Where on the one hand you are saying accrual, on the other hand you are saying received and expended. So as if it's only receipts and payments. No. Since the accrual basis is there now, it includes every income and every expense has to be accounted. And the profit and loss account should reveal a true and fair view. The balance sheet should reveal a true and fair view. All sales and purchase of goods and services by the company, the assets and liabilities of the company, these three are financial. The last one, items of cost as may be prescribed. This we will see when we come to audit, where we'll talk about cost audit. There, we will talk about certain companies belonging to certain industries for which cost accounts has been prescribed. Maintenance of cost records has been, so we call it cost accounting, whatever. Basically, maintenance of cost records. Systematically collecting elements of cost, tabulating them so that at any time you can determine the cost of manufacturing or a unit or providing a service. It's there. So the items of cost, but that's prescribed only for certain companies, not all. So we'll see that when we come to audit. As of now, 
we are only going to see accounts. Similarly, the word book and paper has been used. Book and paper, books and paper. Yeah. Include or book or paper, whatever. Books of account, which includes your complete ledger, journal, everything. Deeds, documents, vouchers, writings. See, again, I highlighted document because the word document is also defined. Later on, when you come to the General Clauses Act, you'll see the word document is clearly defined there, right? How, what is a document? So, documents, minutes and registers maintained on paper or in electronics. So, if there was a million dollar question you were waiting to ask or it was in your mind, 100% books of account maintained on in electronic form are valid. Okay. So, books, book and or paper has a wider import. Book and or paper includes books of account. It's a wider import. It, though the word used is book and the paper, okay, and books of account, it is, you can also maintain these books and paper, book and paper in electronic form. See, today we are living in a digital world. For example, if you, Want me to make payment? You will ask me to send it by GPay, right? So I will send it by GPay to your account. Now, so the online transaction would be there, and that will be there will be no sign by you. Yeah, but I will get an acknowledgement from your bank that your the money has been credited in your account. That is my proof. It is not in paper. It is in electronic form. I have to store it in electronic form, right? And so that is today we are reaching a stage where you know. Uh, this will also be um, this. This will also be very relevant to you because going forward, if some of you have decided to become chartered accountants in practice, especially concentrating on audits of companies, then you will find no more. Th there is no more audit of books. Okay, if you are expecting some books of account to be given to you, some ledger to be given to you, in sad disappointment. Uh, so uh, most of you, when you go into the office, into into a client's office you would be going in a team. Right? So your team leader would have access, view access, we call it, into the accounting system, wherein you would be able to go there and have a look. Then you will collect the data, collate the data, look at it, review the ledger accounts and all that online. You won't print it out and all. Then once you select a certain transactions which are according to you, going outside of the purview or not in accordance with whatever, the internal control procedure or the companies act or whatever then you will ask for further book and paper so you will say please give me the for example you might go to a company and you might find that if there is a, a, a contract event one of the vendor company is having a relative as a director immediately alerted sir related party related party have you complied with requirements what are the terms and conditions etc etc so this is how the audit will go Nothing will be, it is not that they will give you paper. So it will be more by clicking. This is quite a very interesting topic. Let us hope that I can retain your interest. Yeah. Correct. You have to, you are absolutely correct, Pa. From now on, remember, see, think about it. I'll give an example, you will understand. When two doctors are talking with the patient present, they will use medical terms. That is what gives them the respect. See, if they talk in very, very simple terms, then you and I will understand. Okay, though, of course, it, that is another thing. Making the patient understand what his problem is in simple terms is art. But normally when we they are speaking, right, the professionals speak in professional terms. There is a sign of a professional. Hmm? Not Baba. You should know what is the word, what is the technique. There is a technical term for it. For example, edema. See, for you, it's a weakness. It's a, it's a sorry, not weakness. It's a, a swelling. When there is a swelling, Anywhere, inside, outside, you call it a swelling. Okay, but for a doctor, it's called edema. So, so cerebral edema, it's nothing great. <laughs> slightly headache is there no? because this brain slightly enlarges, it's called edema, cerebral edema. So, see, when you say cerebral edema, okay, you talk technically. So, that is something you might want to pick up over a period of time. Uh, that's when words are being used by the faculty now, don't hesitate to write it down somewhere. Look it up. Make it part of your vocabulary. Make it part of the word, words that you know. That's called vocabulary. The words that you know and use is your vocabulary. Okay, moving on. Books of account 
shall be prepared and kept at the registered office of the company. So, primarily, first step, you keep it at the registered office. Now, you will say, sir, my registered office is in Indore, uh, which, you know, in Madhya Pradesh. Nice place, no doubt. But uh, I don't, my, my main, for the, because our founder was born in uh, Bhavra, Bhavra district in uh, Madhya Pradesh, and our first factory came up in that district. Uh, we had our head office in Indore. And we, are, we were a Madhya Pradesh company, but we did well. We Today, we are a pan-India company with a brand that is recognized all over with exports. So, obviously, uh, although, but still, for sentiment's sake, our MD, our founder, once says it should be only, registered office should be in uh, uh, indoor. That itself is a concession. They not Bhavra, indoor. So, uh, uh, is not I-N-D-O-R. That is indoor. This is I-N-D-O-R, capital of Madhya Pradesh, indoor. So the point I'm making is, so we have decided to shift our corporate office to Mumbai, where we have a huge corporate office in Mulung, where we operate from that place. And uh, MD comes and goes occasionally, but most of us sit in Mulung. And uh, how can we maintain our books of account in registered office in Indore, sir? You don't have to. So if you want, you can keep it at such other place in India, in India. So you can't come back to me again and say, no, no, sir, we are a large international company. Though we are based in Mumbai, we operate all over the world. We want to go to New York. Sorry, your books of account have to be maintained in India. But any other place other than the registered office, provided the board of directors should pass a resolution. That's all. Board meets and says the one resolution. Then you should inform the registrar. Within seven days, you should give the registrar a notice, giving the full address. Because later on you will find the registrar has the right to visit your registered office and also the place where the books of account are kept. He can come, the registrar can come or he's, he can depute somebody to come and inspect your books of account to say whether you have done. This is not audit. Don't confuse inspection with audit. That will be happening later. So that happens and in your. it's not in your uh, uh, intermediate. After you finish your final exam, self-paced module set A, you will have corporate and economic class. There you might find that you are learning this topic. That then just relate to the fact that books of account of a company may be maintained at place in India other than the registered office. You can procedure, pass a board resolution, intimate to the registrar within seven days thereof. Right? So this is the point. Uh, and you have to intimate the registrar, the address of that other place. Right? So this is the point. Sorry. The stuff, in case you want to maintain books of account of your branch office, you can. Branch office. Meaning, here I can agree. So you might say, sir, we are having huge office. See, one of our clients is having a huge operation in Los Angeles. Huge operation. They ship the goods to Los Angeles. They have a godown there where they maintain an off offshore godown, I mean, in uh, Los Angeles City, where from there they sell goods to their local customers. So instead of selling it directly and shipping it, they ship it to themselves. And from their godown, which is huge, they sell it to the entire US, Western board and central parts of East. So it's a huge business. So they have a office there. So the, can they maintain their books of account in that branch office? Yes, they can. But every month, periodically, summarized returns have to be sent. And you have to declare that office as a branch office, okay, wherein you have to maintain the books of account. Today, maintaining books of account for a branch office is not a problem. I don't have to go to Los Angeles to maintain the books there. Baba. All I need to do is offshoring. See, you, we got the data electronically. If sitting at home, we can do it. Provided all the documents are scanned and we have it, we can do it. Hmm? Oh, sorry, capital of MP is not uh, indoor. I am sorry, Bhopal. But indoor is in Madhya Pradesh, right? I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. You are from you are from Madhya Pradesh, is it? Sorry, I was wrongly under the impression that it is indoor. No problem. Bhopal, yeah, Bhopal is the capital of uh, Madhya Pradesh. Indoor. For all you know, that uh, that may become the second capital. No if you are from Bhopal, I'm very sorry. Don't get angry with them. But if you are from Indore, then you should be happy that somebody is thinking that Indore is the capital of 
मध्य प्रदेश Okay. Yeah. See, when I say Edima, you'll be one of my friends. You know, was there, na? I was saying I was heading, having a headache immediately. He said, "Shrikan, I think you got a cerebral edema." I said, "What cerebral edema?" You know, just saying head is slightly swollen. <laughs> so for that, there's a medicine you take. Immediately, your swelling will come down. Okay. Some people even without edema, their head is swollen. What to do? <laughs> okay. Thank you for the correction, Jala. जलज बिहानी चलो नाउ वन मोर थिंग इज द बुक्स ऑफ अकाउंट एंड अदर रेलेवेंट पेपर्स मे बी केप्ट इन इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मोड नो प्रॉब्लम सी टुडे पोस्ट 2000 थाउजेंड एडी स्लोली वी हैव मूव टूवर्ड्स थ्रोइंग आउट ऑफ फिजिकल मोड एंड वी हैव मूव इन टू इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मोड सो इलेक्ट्रॉनिक मोड वी कैन कीप इट नो सो दिस पार्ट ऑफ द टॉपिक ना आई विल आई विल नॉट वेस्ट योर टाइम टू मच Except to highlight certain points, that's all. So the books of account and other relevant papers shall remain accessible in India so as to be usable for subsequent relevance uh, reference. So the idea is, suppose you are using a cloud platform, AWS. So it should it will be outside India. Physically, the server may be outside India. You can, but it should remain accessible in India. And also, see the B part shows the perfect, you know that the, the the way the mca you know wants to be sure that records are correctly maintained so they are saying be retained completely in the format in which they were originally generated sent or received or in a format which shall present accurately the information generated sent or received and the information contained in the electronic records shall remain complete and unaltered see idea is i am booking a sale now when i am entering the sale entry now i can do anything i want so they are saying the proof of that entry should be available in such a manner that it is retained as if it was originally generated see there are this is a very very interesting if you know your is audit and your logical security see if it's a physical sale bill that i am scanning and entering into my system no problem i can scan the physical sale bill keep it and the content of it can be immediately transferred to the database and be held in electronic form the ledger etc will be updated blah blah it's easy i just have to scan the sale bill today we have scanners and uh, character recognition software which can immediately take it off and if you have a pre formed uh, format it will go or if you are generating an invoice through erp straight away it will go to your books of account and you will have an invoice also if you want now suppose i am doing a complete electronic transaction no paper that is when the logical security becomes very important so when the sale bill is raised it should been it would have had a unique hash generated and it would have been transferred in asymmetric crypto system to the other party as part of the e-commerce transaction now that record needs to be maintained you might think i'm a little bit confusing you don't get confused because this will become very relevant when you come to auditing one more thing they are going to tell you here that is see for the financial years commencing on or after first day of april 2023 earlier it was 22 now they made it 23 so from current onwards every company which uses accounting software maintaining its books of account shall use only such accounting software which has a future of recording audit trail that's why i built a big uh, background story here so that once you come here you will understand what they are trying to say so they are saying when you generate an electronic transaction a complete record should be there including the hash so that tomorrow somebody should not be able to change it are you able to see what they are saying shall remain complete and unaltered so suppose it's their fear is that and rightly so i'm not questioning that fear uh, even as a future auditor of a company you should have the similar fear Boss, you are saying that you maintained it in electronic form, right? Now, to see, I audit and I go. I audit your. The, you give me a set of electronic records. I audit. I go. I can't take all your uh, electronic records and store it. See, even assume because it's soft, uh, soft copy. How much can I store? There is a restriction on my memory also. So I will leave it and go. How do I? How am I going to ensure that the books I have audited and certified are there? the only way is ensure that there is an audit trail 
so that any transaction that I audited was created by one user ID password. A purchase entry was made. Let us say that a purchase uh, order was issued. A purchase order is raised. See, the purchase order is the beginning. The purchase order is raised. At that time, that purchase order was generated using one user ID password. Now, now tomorrow, somebody should not be able to go there and change the PO. Once the PO is generated, that's it. If you want to change the PO, then you have to edit it. In which case, there would be an edit log of each change made in the books of account, along with the date on which such changes were made. So that, hello, no problem. You issued a purchase order for 5,000 units, right? Now you want to change it to 4,500? No problem. Bill is there for 4,500? I'm happy. But when you change from 5,000 to 4,500, those 500 units you removed from the PO now. Under whose authority was it done? Who did it? So that gentleman's user ID password should be there. That's all. So this way, an audit trail becomes very important and they've made it statutory that the software that is being used should have the facility of recording audit trail of each and every transaction. Also, it should create an edit log. Audit trail means who created that entry first. Their user ID password should be captured. And, then, and lastly, ensuring that the audit trail cannot be disabled. <laughs> See, above the in any in any in any accounting in any software system now in any information system there will be three people one would be the user you and i user okay then there would be the accounts department or the they'll be the people who own the data they'll own the data because they only can control the data i am as an auditor i'm only a user even the board of directors are only users in a very good system you know, in an extraordinarily good system where there's internal control, your director should not be able to make entries in the books of account without the CFO's knowledge or without any... I mean, it cannot be done. See, you appointed a CFO to maintain the accounts. Now, you can't go and use your user ID password or something and change it. I tell you the reason. Because the whole uh, scam, na, Satyam scam happened because of this. Not because the MD could go and do it, but because... They could go and change everything. They were doing everything. So that is the problem. This audit trail should not be. So what happens now? There will be a guy called systems administrator who is in charge of this system itself, the, 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 the technical framework within which the data resides, the access points, the, that, the memory, everything. So now the, uh, the fire, the data servers, everything is controlled by the sysad. Now, sysad has no business to get into the data. Right? The owner of the application and the data, now they can write software which can change the application, which runs the, uh, which accesses the data. The sysad cannot come near that. He is responsible only for uh, ensuring that the hardware and technical and connectivities are working correctly and the firewall is in place. Everything is That is his job. Now, the sysad will have one power. That is, he can actually remove or disable the auditor. That for certain reasons it is given to him. Now, when he uses that, that will be recorded. The fact that this is said, disabled the audit trail for a short while will be recorded. So, I mean, why I'm giving you this elaborate uh, input on uh, information systems audit is very interesting area. And once you go there, you'll realize that today's world, you cannot survive as a chartered accountant unless you are thorough with information systems and procedures. No, no, no. Hash file in that context is different. See, hash file is computed. When a data is when data is transmitted from one system to another system, the hash will be computed. Okay. And then that system, once it goes there, now the hash will be verified. So that actually is a verification process. So if the hash does not tally, the, the, the file will be rejected and the, the packet will be rejected. So you have to again resend it. So hash in the context in which I'm using, the hash value is actually used not to corrupt the data, but to verify the data. Okay, to verify the data. Correct. In in banks, the audit trail will be very, very thorough. Very, very thorough. Which is why you find when you go to a, a public sector bank or some banks that which have a, a what is that uh, CBS system, computerized banking system, very slow. 
because their bandwidths are very slow and everybody has to uh, log in. Nowadays, they're using uh, biometrics also and that becomes even more tough. When sometimes the biometrics machine doesn't work, it will keep, when you keep on using it, now it will lose its uh, uh, accuracy. Then you keep your finger, nothing happens. But that's part of the game. Hmm? So today we are moving slowly away from user ID password to biometrics. Either a fingerprint or retina, whatever, voice. More, so many methods of recognition are there. Yeah, for your information, I am a certified information systems auditor. So I'm not trying to waste your time on that. But in this context, I'm saying it is irrelevant. If you have, you, have, you should have some knowledge of information systems audit. So, now, in case you are having a branch electronic form, then the information received from the branch shall not be altered and shall be kept in a manner where it shall depict what was originally received from the branches. The information in the electronic record of the document shall be capable of being displayed in a legible form. Uh, whatever, maybe they want to be sure that what is contained in digital form in the computer should be capable of being printed in normal language, English, Hindi, whatever. The audit committee or the board shall ensure that there is a proper system for storage, retrieval, display or printout of the electronic records. So in case there is a need, I put an exclamation there because with all the elaborate digitalization effort that's going on, still they want printouts. Huh? Still they want printouts. God only knows why. In fact, many times I upload uh, stuff on to the income tax department's uh, website. In fact, I'm going against my own principle, you know, when I'm printing this uh, Board of Studies uh, material. The only reason I'm doing it is because I don't have another tab where I can load it. I, I'm planning to get one more tab so that, you know, because my um, my mobile, I'm using it for your queries. Query, I'm seeing it as a query pad. And um, the screen is anyway used by me for your lecture. So that is why I'm having a printout. There's normally no printouts. Okay, no printouts. See on the screen and finish it. So the audit committee shall ensure all this. So now don't think that the audit committee is somebody different. The audit committee is a committee of the board. So there is a board. From those board members, we form a committee, board committee called the audit committee. The audit committee's responsibility is to ensure that internal control systems are there. Books of account are maintained in accordance with the act. All that. Also to identify the auditor and appoint him. All this is the responsibility of the audit committee. Such records shall not be disposed of or rendered unusable unless permitted by law. Backup of all data including data at foreign location should be kept on servers physically located in India. Right. The company shall intimate to the registrar on an annual basis at the time of filing of financial statement the name of the service provider, the internet protocol address, the location of the service provider, wherever applicable, where the books of account and other books and papers are maintained on cloud, such address as provided by the service provider. The idea is all these details should be there in case the registrar wants to access it. He has the right to do so. The books of account of a company maintained within India. Is it slow enough for you, Dev? The books of account of a company maintained within India shall be open for inspection by a director. So any director of a company can ask for inspection of books of account. It's the right of a director. It is the right of a director to inspect the books of account. See, if you are the director of a company, you have the right to inspect the books of account. In case the financial information is outside India, the copies of the same shall be maintained and produced. But when can I do the inspection? I cannot just barge in at any time I want. Inspection shall be done during business hours at the registered place or other such other place where books of account are maintained. So during business hours, whichever it is, okay, you have to come do it. You might ask me, would would directors 
not be anyway they are going to be there they are the boss like that not always see there may be two groups one majority group and one minority group so one of the directors may be representing minority group one of the directors may be representing minority group that minority group director may want to inspect so these guys are maybe preventing him so that is why they are saying very clearly it is the right of a director to ask for inspection and you have to provide inspection meaning day to day books and records okay like that it is very very important now in case there is an inspection by a director as above, above said the officers and other employees of the company shall give to the person making such inspection all assistance in connection with the inspection okay so whatever support he needs you no know, you can't he when he comes for inspection you cannot simply give him access and say go ahead see what you want in case you want any record you have to take it in case you want further explanation you have to give it whatever reasonably expect be careful what you are talking about is only for the company in case of any subsidiary inspection can be done only by the person authorized in this behalf by the resolution of the board so yeah, any individual director cannot go and inspect subsidiary for a subsidiary's book inspection of subsidiary's books the holding company should authorize the person only they can go and inspect no when a director seeks financial information kept outside india see for books maintained in india you can just walk in and ask for inspection during business hours at the register place but if you are asking for information kept outside india then the director should make specific i think this is very very important right you should make specific return request for india if you are going to inspect the books in india no need for return but if it's going to be foreign you have to give return the request shall be made by the director himself and not by or through his power of attorney holder or agent so once he makes the request he can authorize somebody to go or see verify but the request could come only from the director again because director himself okay is an agent of the company he is so he cannot have one more agent who will come and tell no so no power of attorney or agent the director himself should make but after having made the request in writing he can authorize right but the authorized representative cannot make the request in case such a request is made in writing for financial information kept outside india such financial information shall be provided within 15 15 days of receipt of written request right now there is a small question this was asked in the examination okay so check out one of the directors of suryodaya pharma limited has sent a request for inspection of the books of accounts attorney not agarni attorney it's a power of attorney boss agent see suppose your uncle is in us he wants to sell his property in india he wants you to do it he will give you power na that is called power of attorney attorney is a person who represent another attorney is a person who represents another when you are representing your uncle you become attorney though there is another meaning for the word attorney in 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 us is called lawyer again why is a lawyer called an attorney because he will represent his client in the court the client will not speak on his behalf the attorney will speak the the client will give power to the attorney to speak for himself 
So that's why anybody who acts for another person is called attorney. The document by which that is given is called power of attorney. Uh, power of attorney. So the person who is holding it, that document uh, which gives him power is called PO hold, POA holder, power of attorney holder. Suppose your uncle is having a lot of uh, shares. So he wants you to operate the DP account. He wants you to operate his DP, deposit department account. Wow. Now he says, um, Prince, you do whatever you want. Sell, buy. I'll give you power of attorney. Please ensure that my money is safe. He trusts you. So he gives it to you. So that document by which he will authorize you now, it is called the power of attorney. You will go and file it with the depository participant who will register it. Thereafter, he can't sign. Only you can sign. Till the POA is cancelled. In fact, only he wants to take back control, then he has to send a, another letter to the DP saying, I'm cancelling my POA with immediate effect. Thereafter, only he can sign. So this is, I'm giving one or two examples of power of attorney. Okay. If when you're studying contract, you'll study law of agency, I hope. Unless it, ah, it's removed from the syllabus. Sorry, sorry. Don't correct me. Don't correct me. I know it is removed from the syllabus. So enjoy. Go. You don't have to know anything about attorney agent. For example, in the real world, it is all there. Don't worry. When you come there, you will have to remember all that. Okay. One of the directors of Surya De Pharma, Limit Pharma Limited has sent a request for inspection of the books of account of the company. Now, the CFO of the company refuses to provide access to the said books on the grounds that the director will be provided with a quarterly summary of financial position at the board meeting. So, see, the CFO, what a nice gentleman. The director is asking for inspection of books. Now, the CFO is sending a mail. I think that is the beauty of the younger generation. Huh? So, they, you guys are all so clear. He said, Mr. So-and-so director, sorry, I cannot give access to the books. Because you will be provided with the quarterly summary. Now, at that time, you read uh, at the board meeting. Why oh, you are asking inspection? Go, go, go. Now, advise the board of the company as to whether the action taken by the CFO is correct in the light of the relevant provisions of the Companies Act 2013. Correct. Suman Goyal is already giving me an answer. The action of CFO is not correct. Correct. See, this is simple. Three marks, Baba. Three marks, you write four lines, not more than that. Three marks, four, maximum five lines. If you're writing more than five lines, you're wasting them. Because there may be another question with six marks. It needs more. So this question just needs you to say, not bluntly, CFO is incorrect. No. You give explanation, as Suman has rightly done. Suman's uh, action, uh, answer is good. Action of CFO of not of refusing inspection of books of account is not right. Add that one thing so that the action of the CFO refusing to provide access to the books of account is not right. Okay. <laughs> then, then you can say because according to uh, section 128, even if you don't remember 3 and 4, it is okay. 128, try to remember. Books of account of a company maintained within India shall be open for inspection by a director. Okay. Inspection is within every business house. Therefore, then you write whatever Suman Goyal has said correctly. Action of the CFO. It's not right. Okay. Three marks. But still, there is one more point. Will your answer be different if the request is made by a shareholder? Abhishek Bajbai says, one case CFO cannot, two case CFO can. Beautifully answered. Two case okay, CFO can. Yes. There again, don't be rude. See, you can say the same thing in a polite way. My humble suggestion, if you are the CFO, is it's a polite letter saying, more than happy to receive your request. But as you are aware, under section uh, 128, direct, I mean, don't have to say 128. Members are not entitled to inspect the books of account. Don't worry. We will be circulating our annual financial statement in the month of July. When I will see to it that you get a copy and you can definitely come to the AGM and uh, ask for any queries and doubts. It will be our pleasure to answer you. Okay? Because if you allow members to inspect, what will happen? 
if you allow members to inspect two problems. One, donkeys who have no work at home will come and sit in the office asking inspection rate, wasting time. Secondly, corporate secrets may be revealed. There are many secret information now which should not be revealed in the middle. At the end of the year, yes. If you are a listed company, you have to transparently tell. But in the middle, see, suppose my June quarter uh, sales has been low. Now, a shareholder can come and find out. See, let him wait for the quarterly results to be announced. When I announce my quarterly result, he will know. Before that, he should not come and see. Correct. Okay. Now, Mr. Aditya Ram, Director of Suntech Infosystems Limited, which has an office in Seattle, USA, demands certain financial information relating to the Seattle operations over phone. So, Aditya Ram is a director. Suntech Infosystems has an office in Seattle. Now, this guy says, I want information about Seattle operations. But he does it. He, he calls up the company and says, hey, I want the information about what's happening in Seattle. Can I have this information? Examine the validity. So again, notice it's two marks. So examine the validity. The request by Mr. Aditya Ram is invalid. Invalid. Whereas if it's a written request is sent by Mr. Aditya Ram, no problem. But if it is sent by Aditya Ram's advocate on his behalf, no. Again, he's violating the same thing. Because the request should come from Aditya Ram himself and not from his advocate. Hmm? See, we have one person, Ms. Almas Shaikh, who is saying shareholders are the owners. Correct, you are right. They have the authorized, they have authorized to check financial statements. Hence, CFO should provide us for demand. I think, my, madam, there is a confusion here. Are you clear? We are here talking about books of account. Books of account. Books of account are nothing but your general ledger, your sales journal, your basic records, one-on-one -on -one transactional records. That is called books of account. Now here, financial statement is different. They are the summarized st statements. They will be provided only once in a year. If it is listed company, then certain summarized statements will be given once in a quarter. Correct. To the shareholders also. For a listed company, for a listed company, the members also will, and why members? The entire Indian public for a listed company, if you wait, now they will publish quarterly financial results. So that you will know. But as a member, you cannot inspect the books of account. I hope Almas Sheikh has got the point. You can't ask for books of account. Whereas this guy wants inspection of books of account. If suppose here it says financial statement, then you are right. Almas, madam, the point here is not about correcting you, but about making you aware of how we are making slight, you know, confusion. The three marks. Think about it. Hmm? Have you understood? So, see, it's the, your answer twists on only one point. You are using the word financial statements. Financial statements is totally different. We'll be seeing it later. Balance sheet, pay in the account, notes on account. There is financial statement. That he is entitled. Why oh, check? You can sit at home and do it, but not yet at any time he wants. There is a pro at the end of the year, we'll prepare, get it audited, circulated. We will prepare, get it audited, circulated, come to the AGM, ask any question, we will answer. Got it? So I'm happy that you made this answer, though wrong. Thereby, there is clearly you, some of you are having confusion between. Books of account and financial state. Books of account is the record of transactions. Ledger, sales journal, purchase journal, journal, everything. Whereas your uh, financial statement is the balance sheet and p and That members are definitely entitled. We are going to see that later. He is entitled. Not giving to him is wrong. But not under this section. I will try to give, but not today. See, I will take something better and I will give how to present it. These are all simple one-liners, Baba. You should not write more, see, two marks, maximum four lines. Nothing more than that. Okay. One more thing, now. In one of my other earlier, last batch class, I used to encourage students 
to write answers in the query pad. Means instead of telling one line, no, yes, like Supreme Court, I will, even Supreme Court, you know, if you see the orders of Supreme Court, it will run into pages, 20 pages, 30 pages, and all I have read the orders. Finally, they'll come to the conclusion. So you cannot be like a judge saying, no, reject head like that. You can't do that. Okay? So first you have to give the facts. What are the facts? Then you have to give the law, the actual law. Don't worry about whether applying it or That comes later. First, write the law. This is how you display your knowledge. You can write three lines, four lines. Summarize the law, legal position for that situation. It is here that if you give the section number, it will be good. It is here that if you give the uh, case law, it will be good. Then apply this law, apply this section to the uh, situation, the facts. Then give your answer. That is your answer. Playing that. Saying in this case, it is like this. Therefore, not that. So, argument. Then you will finish it. Then lastly, one line conclusion. One line conclusion. What is the question? Give that answer. So that with that, if you write, you know, four parts. Facts, law. In When you are writing the law, don't come, come to your facts. Write the law. It means only to the extent what is there. Okay, only to the extent what is there. Don't write the entire law, don't write one big Ramayana. No. For that question, what is the section or subsection? Write that correctly. For that, you will get 50% of the marks, even if your conclusion is wrong. Are you able to understand? If your conclusion is also right, you summarize the facts, wrote the law, write the law to the facts, and concluded for say, see, these are all not worthy of that. Suppose the question carries four marks, six marks. Then for six marks, if, if you write this neatly, reasonably good English, that is something that you might want to work on. Then even if your English is bad, if your see, today's C institute is very, very, that way they will be very, very uh, sympathetic to you. Even if your English is not Shakespearean or Miltonian English, you, so long as you, you are, they, so long as you clearly expressed it, they are happy. And uh, so the, if so, then, in this format, you will get 80% of the marks. 80% of the marks. If your handwriting is neat and well-written answer, 90% of the marks. Which means on 6, 5.5 uh, and a half marks you get. 5 and a half marks. 6. But 6 on 6, no. Okay. So this is what, uh, this is how I used to do it. If you think it will work for you, please use it. If you think it is not useful, leave it. Don't correct me. You leave it. If you don't want to use it, don't use it. If you want to use it, use it. It works well. Because each one of you will have one way of approach. But I have found that this approach. Also, the last 25 years, I've been telling students and they have used it. And they have told me, over the last 25, 26 years, my successful students have told me that this technique worked for me. Is that the way I wrote it? It worked for me like that. Okay. Another important topic. Books of accounts, see, these are all MCQ types, MCQ type of questions. Books of account together with relevant vouchers shall be preserved for a period of, that's all, period of, yay, for a period of not less than, yay, six financial years, B, five financial years, C, eight financial years, D, ten financial years. That's all. Now you have to write the correct answer. If you know it, you write. If you don't know, no. That is the beauty of MCQ. So, the correct answer is not less than 8 financial years immediately preceding. Right? Where a company has been in existence for less than 8 years, then you should preserve for all immediately preceding financial years. 7 years, then all are done. Once you complete 8 years, you go to the ninth year, okay, then the first year can do. Like, or rather, when you complete the ninth year, the first year will have completed 8 go. Like that. Tenth year, second will go. Like that. So you then keep on. So as and when the yes. Okay? So you need, you need not preserve. Okay? But this is eight years is legal, statutory. Please, yad, yad rat. it is eight financial years immediately preceding. Not less than eight financial years immediately preceding. So when I say I started the company in 2021, so 22 March, first financial year. 21, 22 March, first financial year, 23, 24, 25, 26, 
27, 28, 29. So 29 March, 8th financial year over. Then I enter the next financial year. Na? Then the first financial year can be. Because now we are in the ninth financial year. Na? The first financial year. So on and so. This is as per company law. As per income tax act, it is six years. They can go back six years for reopening and all. Four years, six, six years they can go back. Now, still eight years they are going to preserve anyway. My suggestion to my uh, clients, this is not in accordance with the law. It is not in accordance with the law. It is my view. I will ask them to maintain for 10 years to be on the safe side. 10 years. Then 11th year, first year will go. But statutorily, under the company, you are required to maintain for not less than 8 financial years. Right? Preserve means to keep it safe. Now, what do you mean by preservation? What when you preserve wildlife? What you are doing? You are keeping it safe, keeping it from you know becoming decayed or burnt or unreadable, and keep it safe. So preserve means to keep it safe. Okay, since Pedneker wants it, I will tell it one more time. I will do one thing, Vrednagar ji. I will appreciate Prakash Prasad Vrednagar ji. I will not repeat it now with your permission. There will be one problem we will be doing, let us say. Directly, I will apply in that problem and show you how it is done. Got it? And I will go very, very slow for you. But keep kagas or kalam hai na? So just ensure that you make note of what I am saying. Uh, now, the registers that you are preparing na, under the Companies Act, they are not books of account. They are not books of account. Are you able to understand? Deposit of, no, I think what you mean is register of deposits. Na? I think you, what you mean is register. Now, regi don't confuse. Register of members, register of debenture holders, register of deposits. These are not part of the financial records. Okay, there there is a separate rule for how long you have to keep it. You know that. So don't, yeah, it is like, but this is different, that is different. All the registers come under a different category. Okay. This is books of account. Only what comes under books of account, we are dealing with it here. So don't bring registers into this. Okay. Okay. You are all expert in income tax. Whatever you want to tell me, I will take you. I am not teaching income tax. I practice income tax. So, don't worry. Anyway, for companies that purposes, you have to keep it for... That's why, to be on the safe side, you maintain for 10 years is what I would suggest. Okay. One good thing that's happening in the new laws is they are giving more, uh, you know, liberal view for the taxpayer and all. So, we have come to an end to this section 128. Now, so very important means we are coming to an end. So, penalty in the section 128. Okay. There is a penalty for contravention of section 128. Any 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 provision of 128 to contravene. Who are the persons responsible? Managing director, whole time director, in charge of finance. Chief Financial Officer, if so designated out, he is compulsorily liable. Any other person of a company charged by the board with duty of complying with provisions of Section 128. See, if the board has not charged, you are not liable. Only if you have been charged, you are liable. Okay. So, basically, Managing Director, whole time Director, CFO, any other person charged by the board with the duty of complying with the provisions of section 128. Right? This is for fixing penalty. Right? So one thing you'll notice is non-hold time directors, non-executive directors, ex directors who are not responsible for day-to-day -day management, non-hold time. See, I know, you then don't say I'm speaking fast. Listen to me now. Non-hold time director, non-executive director, 
directors who are not engaged who are not part of the day to day management of the company right these directors are not liable only managing director all time director cfo are liable for it for maintenance of books of account though collectively the board is responsible if there is a failure collectively the board is responsible because some of the independent directors could also become part of the audit committee so collectively they are responsible but if there is any violation of section 128 only md whole time director in charge of finance and the cfo and any other person charged will be there even a whole time director who is not connected with finance is not covered the reason is they may not have the knowledge they may not know what it is to be done so they are not to be punished whereas the whole time director in charge of finance is expected to know finance right so they are made liable now we are moving on to the next topic which is financial statement financial statement hmm? so financial statement and again see i am not criticizing i am not saying anything is wrong but i am unable to understand why they will use the word financial statement when there are so many if there is only one then financial statement financial statement whereas there are balance sheet pnl cash flow statement of changes in equity explanatory notes etc so many are there so they should say financial statements but what they are trying to say is all these items all these items rolled into one becomes financial statement all these items rolled into one become financial statements statement so balance sheet p and l cash flow statement of changes in equity everything and explanatory notes annexed to our forming part of financial statements let us take up one by one and i'm sure some of it is so clear that you don't have to worry balance sheet okay then you have p and l and i and d income and expenditure profit and loss and income and expenditure account. okay it's whatever you call it either call it profit and loss account or income and expenditure account. right in fact i would feel income and expenditure is a more elegant state the profit and see profit is a net figure so why call it profit and loss account that to profit and loss so how can the same statement have both profit and loss so that confusion is always there so we can as well call it income and expenditure because definitely the profit and loss account has been no head it summarizes the income and expenditure income on the right hand side the credit side and the expenditure meaning whether actually spent or not not expenses expenses are actually spent expenditure is spent but may not be paid also paid or not paid it is spent cash flow statement as i'm sure you are familiar with it how to prepare it and all that is that this cash flow statement is a they feel that it is little too complicated so for certain categories of companies they are exempted cash flow statement so they are saying financial statement with respect to one person company small company dar sorry dormant company and private startup company may not include the cash flow statement so which are the companies which don't have to have cash flow statement opc small company dormant company and private startup company see startup company we already saw when we discussed acceptance of deposits to be a startup company you should be a registered with the ministry of development okay they will register you once you register with them and you are a private company then this won't apply to you okay idea is they are small and they don't have to elaborately present cash flow for they feel okay 
you notice that there is no exemption for private company as such only for small company see today in those days you know there was this distinction between private company and public company irrespective of size today they are very clear the financial uh, what the, the financial you know uh, size the financial sales network that becomes relevant so that if you are big then even though you are a private company they are saying you are bound by certain tougher provisions but if you are not having such high 4 crore you know you know that um, capital and all that 40 crore small company then you need not bother you can go ahead and do it whatever you want no need for cash flow statement also all companies should give a summary of the changes in equity, meaning what is the opening share capital and what is the closing share capital? Any issues of shares during their allotments, any buyback, any you know, all the any changes in the equity, preference, etc., should be summarized, clearly showing what happened during the year. Right. Lastly. If you've seen the annual report of a large company, if you have seen the annual report of a large company, and I strongly recommend that you should, okay, you would have found that there are pages and pages of explanatory notes. In fact, every line item in the balance sheet will be supported by a number. So that number is the number of the note. So if you find share capital one note, then you go to note number one. Depends. Or sales one. Then you go to sales one. You will find sales is given clearly in more detail. What you find in the PL will only be one line item, the top line. The breakup will be given in one. What type of sales, different type of sales. Okay, everything will be given there. So that is called notes. In addition to that, any disclosures. In fact, this this uh, thank you, Arthur. Now the point here is this: these notes are very very important to you as an audit in auditing and accounting. So when you are preparing the financial statements, you have to comply with the accounting standards. Also, the indices in case it is applicable to you. Also, the the a the the sorry the the format of the balance sheet, now which is given in Schedule Three, that has pages and pages of disclosures. They have given you job to do. All that has to be disclosed clearly. It's a pain, and the beauty of it is again I am telling this without any intention to criticize, but as a general observation, that most, for example, I was the secretary of the. Tamil Nadu Investor Association for three years. Tamil Nadu Investor Association, which is one of the premier investor associations. Uh, with Ahmedabad Investor Association is the only other big one. So, Tamil Nadu Investor Association. Uh, we, when I was secretary, I used to sit as a, I was in one of the co opted There is secretary of the Tamil Nadu Investor Association sit on the SEBI uh, committee for some things. So, only secretary can go, ex officio office. Why I am telling? At that time, you know, I used to find, being a channel accountant, I used to recommend, sir, please read the balance sheets, go through them and all. Many investors will say, Mr. Srikanth, where is the time to read all the balance sheets? Don't waste your time reading balance sheets. Don't read notes and all that. Why? You channel accountants are all frauds. Not me. They say. I am not saying. They, the public, after Satyam scam, we don't trust you. So we won't read. No, they will tell, I say, great boss, it's your choice. Then they will do so many things. They will lose their money. Then they will again blame everybody, including Sebi. That's a, that's a different story. Point here is, the explanatory statement notes contain wealth of information with which you can do so much analysis. You can use the numbers to make many, many analysis. So, the word annexed and the word attached Okay, is very important. The word annexed I have highlighted here, attached. 
Later on, when we come to board of directors report, you will find the board of directors report is attached to the balance sheet, attached. Whereas the, uh, you know, the notes on accounts is annexed. The income and expenditure or profit and loss account is annexed. Hmm? So, think about it. It is something like this. If I show you, you will understand. Okay. Give me one, one minute to get something. Yes. Now, I have here your material. Assuming that this is the material. Hmm? Now, this is the first sheet. Nah. This is the second and all. Now, what I am doing, I hope we have a I'm using a stapler. I'm using a stapler and I am stapling this. Stapling. Now this cannot be removed without tearing. So this is annexed. Means once any document is annexed, then it forms part and parcel. Then as this paper, I am not stapling. I am using this clip. To clip it. This is attached. This is annexed. What the difference? When a, when a document or statement is annexed, it forms part and parcel. Whereas the auditor's report is attached. The director's report is attached. The P&L annexed. All these are annexed. Cash flow annexed. Statement of changes of equity annexed. Explanatory notes, annexed. So they form part and parcel, which means what happens? The auditor is giving his report now. He is giving his report on the balance sheet and every document annexed to it, but not to any document which is attached to it. Which means the auditor's report extends to the balance sheet and every document annexed to it. It is not to those attached. Like the board of directors report, sorry, whatever they state, you go check with them. I have not certified it. When I say I, I am a signing partner of a firm. Therefore, I am saying I. Don't mistake me. You know? So, I I don't certify the board of directors. Whatever they say. If you want, if you think there is a discrepancy between me and them, you ask me about my balance sheet, I will explain to you. What he says or not, I cannot explain. Go to him. Because my report does not extend to any document which is only attached the director's report is attached there. Whereas the notes and accounts, notes of account, notes on, notes on accounts, etc., etc., all these items are attached. So the balance sheet is the main document. In the financial statement, the balance sheet is the fundamental document. The P&L supports that balance sheet. It is annexed. There. Cash flow statement supports it is annexed. There. Then it is extracted. No, it's the annexed. There. Then statement notes. So together that becomes the financial statement. The auditor gives his opinion on that. So his report is attached. Then the directors give their report about the operations of the company for the last one year. So that is attached. Then all sorts of uh, pictures, photo, blah, 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 blah. Make it into a nice PDF document and then send it to your shareholders. This is the duty of the directors. This is called financial statement and audited report. Just when you are free, uh, my humble request to you, as kind of homework, you can go to uh, Google and uh, download to, uh, Infosys 2023 uh, annual report. 2020 annual report of Infosys 2023. Just don't uh, try to memorize it or read it. Just say go through it. Uh, just have a look at it. As a matter of general interest, you go to see. Just go there. Just have a look. Nothing wrong. You don't, for example, I go to a museum. I Recently, I was in a place called Tarangambadi. I went into the museum. kept looking at things. I am not a historical research archaeologist. But then, it's very interesting. Okay, this is there. That is there. Don't try to memorize or try to remember. Just go through it once. It will stick in your mind. Then, when you are studying and auditing, when you are studying and accounting, whatever I am telling, it will make a little more sense to you. However much you ask me, what is this? What is that? What is this? I keep on telling you. But nothing like your own experience. Am I correct or not? Something like that. Suppose I explain all the animals to you. Right from lion, tiger, zebra, zebra. I show the picture to you. 
then i explained how i give the bi biological and still it cannot beat going to the zoo watching the actual animal there so similarly you go there and see the live balance sheet i know this is not a good thing teacher's job is to do it you are here to do for me why should i do anything for myself think about it just to try it you'll be you'll be so happy that once you will start reading more and more balance sheets and pnl somebody was asking you know mr sri khan teach me how to become expert in share market and all this is the beginning as you read more and more balance sheets you will start understanding financial statements then slowly you will start making the connects then the ratios will become clearer to you then the connections between the ratios and the movement then valuation then suddenly you realize hey this company is a good company i can buy it it will happen over 5 years 3 years overnight you cannot do it but first starting is go through the balance sheet at least the fact that you are a chartered accountant will help you okay is what i would say appendix is different appendix is the last part that is I, I, appendix is not relevant in this topic but since you are put the word appendix i'm saying appendix is suppose i'm writing a book okay and in that book i have said many many things but somewhere i'm saying for more details about this refer to appendix something which is appended see something which is appended okay similar to attached appended has the same meaning similar to attached but append when it is appended it comes at the end that is very important when it is attached it may be anywhere top bottom anywhere middle but when it is appended it will come at the end appended there too okay and it will be hanging like sort of appendage and up, see the hands are called appendages because they are appended to the body the main trunk these two hands are called appendages they are added so appendix is the last part of a book which contains more information which cannot be covered in the main portion so for the sake of reading pleasure we will say hey there is more to know about this you go to the appendix where we have, for example i am mentioning the name of a person and i am saying so and so was one of the important persons responsible etc no more about this gentleman refer to appendix 1 or appendix 2 so there i will keep the that that similar the word annexure and appendix are uh, similar slight like appendix comes at the end for now okay. not relevant in this context here we are only talking about annexures and attachments not about appendices appendices then you have something called the appendix which is there in your body okay which is the vestigial you know the last end of your uh, intestine which is appendix and when that becomes big it is called appendicitis dangerous annexed does not mean occupied ma that you are using in a different context in this context annexed means made part and parcel of the original document in this context in this context annexed when the, when the british annexed a feudal country na they occupied it that is in a different context english is a dangerous language english is a dangerous language same word will have many many meanings okay same word will have many many meanings so in this context annexed means made for part and parcel but in the way you are thinking it means occupied that is when the british annexed uh, uh, the 24 parganas the 24 parganas were occupied by them they were earlier ruled by a nawab but then they annexed it and they said it's part of us and they took it over and they occupied it they are the word annexed as a different meaning actually they are also it means to make part of so when i annex it what happens i make it a part of my my british kingdom british empire so the same meaning only with a different way think about it see the, don't think that i'm giving you too much information uh, but think about it so, language is such a beautiful thing na learning more and more words knowing how to use them don't you think that will help you in the long run think about it maybe today it may not have relevance in the context of multiple choice questions and all that in the long run you, know, you can chalo no Oh, yeah you can use it. you can see any balance sheet in fact tata and bajaj both are good tata motors is a beautiful balance sheet i, I used to do a workshop for uh, ashok leyland where i used to compare their balance sheet with tata motors balance sheet during the workshop so i not i won't compare i will teach them 
the non finance guys na the engineers how to read the balance sheet and how the the engineers will teach them from scratch today workshop by the end of the second day morning when they come na they will analyze tata motors and ashok uh, leland and make presentation and they will tell what is why which is better how what and all so that way it becomes uh, yeah and next can also be another name can be combined is yes. correct combined right. and next one way anyway beautiful so so except where the context otherwise requires see they here also say the context whenever a word is used you should see what context it is used so for the purpose of this section except for the context otherwise requires any reference to financial statement shall include any notes annexed to or forming part of such financial statement giving information required to be given and allowed to be given in the form of such notes see under the accounting standards and in the as etc and the as sorry the schedule 3 itself there are many notes etc which are to be annexed see what is stated in schedule 3 is included in the notes which are annexed in addition to that under the accounting standards you are asked to annex everywhere you have notes that are annexed so whenever any notes is stated as annexed immediately be careful auditor's report will apply to it bound the word financial state so the auditor is expressing the opinion on financial state so any annexure your audit means your audit must complete not complete unless you have verified those documents also and ensure that they are giving the correct information or they are giving the they are not against the balance sheet like that okay good if you are if you are learning 30 new words then a couple of new words may come from our own uh, my own lecture and all also i'm sure good you go through tata motors i tell you between infosys and tata motors tata motors is a simple balance sheet why because it is a simple business na agreed there are got multiple products truck is there car is there and all blah blah then jlr land rover subsidiaries are there. but by and large tata motors stand alone balance sheet is a simple balance sheet it's a straight forward balance sheet it can be easily understood and work with okay so financial statement should also give a true and fair view of the state of affairs of the company or companies true and fair view i am not going to go in i am not going to talk about true and fair view don't even go there your that this entire topic will be taught in auditing in detail why true and fair view why not true and correct view okay well, when you say it is true and fair and all that so you should know you will learn more about it when you are doing uh, auditing it should be in the form provided in schedule 3 i have mean, i've kept on mentioning na uh, schedule 3 so there are seven the companies act 2013 has seven roman seven schedules the the schedules are mentioned in roman numeral this is called roman numerals these numerals these the way they this is the type of representation of numbers called roman numerals right so this roman numeral numbers are there and uh, one second so schedule 3 is the okay what in my first page 129 not included let me see so sorry you're telling me i'll check out so i'll add it later but being yeah it is not no it is included baba here see it's it's included here is this what you meant i have not mentioned section number but it is included here anyway if you will you will make a very good auditor because you are able to immediately point out an error in my material in my presentation that is important now i am not actually good at that you know that way i am not a very good auditor see i i i am not that way i won't find fault i am a solution provider this is why you will find i am more into consulting training corporate training corporate coaching and all that though i do audit <laughs> okay so for me it's a totally different thing for me it's not about these small small things the, the so, small stuff i i give it to my manager and my team you sweat the small stuff here when it comes to me it should be pakka but the big things are what catch my attention hey 
this number is like this. Show me that number. Hey, why? Go. Then they will come back and tell me, no, 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 sir, you are right. Those fellows are not, they have capitalized uh, account. Uh, they have, they have uh, revenueized the capital items. Uh, go, do it. So this is different type of approach to auditing, okay, which is, and I don't bother with the small, small details. Just don't sweat the small stuff. You go there and you do it. That's very dangerous. But luckily the teams do it for me and I trust them. You see, they know, they do it. At, at this level, you know, this is not that, that is not here. They do it. Beyond that is where we have to go. Where we need to see patterns. And we see, we see discordant patterns. Where we see discord. Where we see, hey, if that is so, then why is this not so? So we get into, or we might have, we might have read something or we might have, you connected with some other knowledge that you have. Hey, if that is so, why this is not reflected here? That is how you make your connection. Okay, good. Now, so true and fair view and uh, schedule three. Now, financial statements of every financial year shall be laid before the company at every annual general meeting by the board. So there it is board. It is the duty of the board to ensure that financial statements of every financial year are laid before the company at every AGM. So this is very, very important. That is why later on when we come to management and administration, we study AGM. Na? AGM is compulsory. It is every company shall in every year hold a meeting called AGM management meeting. And one of the main item of business in that AGM would be approval of the Accounts for the last financial year. Okay. So this is very, very important. So here we use the word financial year. And you will you will have to know what is a financial year. Before we go there, let us have a small break for five minutes. Okay. Let us have a small break. A small break before we go there. Sir, break, sir.
Shall I start? So, welcome back from your break. We stopped here when we said financial statements of every financial year should be laid before the company at every annual general meeting. So, you will want to know what is this financial year and rightly so. So, the word financial year is defined. 2 subsection 41 defines financial year. Financial year means the period ending on the 31st day of March every year. So, which means it will begin on the 1st of April and end on the 31st of March. So, financial year is the day 1st April to 31st March. Uniform financial year. All companies have to maintain a uniform financial year. 1st of April to 31st of March. Right? 12 month period by and large. But that's why they are not giving 12 month period. There is a reason for that. Because the first financial year may be more or less than um, 12 months. But whatever it is, it should be beginning on 1st April, ending on 31st. At least it should end on the 31st day of March. Right, sir? No. Where a company is incorporated on or after the first day of January of a year. Now, in those cases, what will happen? Suppose, for example, there is a company which was incorporated on 1st of April, I'm sorry, 1st of January 2023. Now, that company, it will complete. It will reach the 31st day of March 2023. Now, will that become financial year? No. Where a company is in, I will repeat. I know some of you are not able to follow me when I go fast. See, company is incorporated on or after 1st January. 2023. Let's say 3rd January 2023. Now for that fellow, 31st day of March will be 31 3 2023, which means for some days in January and two months, two and a little more than, little less than three months, there will be one financial year. Now there they are saying as an exception, as an exception, they are saying where a company is incorporated on or after the first day of January of a year, the financial year is the period ending on 31st day of March of the following year. Following year. So, if a company is incorporated on 3rd January 2023, then that company's financial year, first financial year, will be ending on 31st March of the following year, which means 31st March 2024. Got it? Suppose it is 1st April, no problem. April to March, is, that is one year. Before April, that is before 30, 1, 1 to 31, 3 of that year, if it is incorporated, it will get pushed to 31st day of March of the following year. To avoid that small gap, 3 months, 2 months, 2 and a half months. So, for example, if a company is incorporated on, for example, 15th of April, then for 15 days, you have to have a financial year. Now, so is there no need. Go straight to the next year and longer financial year will be there. That is why financial year does not say 12 month period ending because it cannot be enough. With this exception, it is quite possible that it will be more than 12 months. Okay. Now, in case of a company or a, or a body corporate, which is a holding company or a subsidiary or associate company of a company incorporated outside India. So, this company, this company which is incorporated in India is the holding company of a foreign company or subsidiary of a foreign company, a company incorporated outside India or associate company. Associate, you know that now. Hey, don't, I remember, you remember where this company is holding more than, I'm sorry, that company is holding more than 20% of this company. This company becomes associate, substantial interest. Then this company will become associate company. Whatever it is, consolidation is needed. So, that foreign company will have to consolidate its balance sheet. Now, so, it may follow a different financial year for consolidation of its accounts outside India. Got it? So, it can have two years. One year would be for Indian accounts, submission in India. And another would be for consolidation with its subsidiary or parent or whatever. And it may, the central government on application may allow any period as financial year, even if that period is not a here. This is only for the purpose of consolidation. Okay. In addition, your normal year would be here. 
For consolidation, you can have. So here, very simple question. I'm sure you can easily answer it. Abhiruchi Limited was incorporated on 11th December. When should the company hold its AGM? So if you go by 96.1, it was on 11th December 2021. So when should it have? No problem. If it is the 11th December 2021, nothing can be done. It will be on 31st March 2022. Straight away. This one, regarded, according to section, the company's financial year will close on 31st March 2022. The company may hold its first AGM by 31st December 2022. That How I calculated that? Don't worry. Later, when you come to management and administration, I will tell you. Again, this problem I will discuss there also. Where I, we will see that the first day AGM should be held within nine months of the close of its first financial year. So, in this case, the first financial year will be ending on 31st March 2022. So, nine months will end on 31st December. Last date. Okay. Now, would your answer be the same if you are informed? That the company was incorporated on 11th February 2021. Can I have your answer? What will be the year ending if it is 11th February I'm giving you time to read. From some of your questions, I'm able to see, beginning with Mr. Ramja's basic question, what is AGM? Sir, listen to me. Annual General Meeting. It is an important meeting. Annual General Meeting. Hmm? Annual General Meeting. So, accounts have to be presented or laid at the Annual General Meeting, AGM. Every company should have at least I mean, one AGM every year. And at that AGM, the accounts have to be laid. Financial statement has to be approved. Okay. So, there is AGM, Annual General Meeting. That answered. Then, uh, Surendra Nar is asking question, why that financial year is following year? Because once a company incorporated, it shall commence business only after having registered office under Section 12 and declaration of directors, blah, blah. Sir, you are, the beauty is you are very intelligent. You have learned subject so well, you are confused. <laughs> For us, there are two things. One is called incorporation. The other is called commencement of business. Here, are we saying commencement of business? See, it's very, very logically, Surendraji, you will understand two minutes. Anywhere in this slide do you find the date of commencement of business is mentioned here? Or where a company commences its business on or after like that. Got it? So, don't worry about that. Huh? Commencement of business is a different activity. That has to happen. I'm not saying it should not happen. That has nothing to do with financial year calculation. Here, what is important is the date of incorporation. Got it? So, now I'm very happy, Mr. Surendran, that you are trying to apply knowledge. But, our knowledge is also dangerous. You understand? <laughs> when, when the section is very clear, why are you bringing something up? Happy that you know it. But also, I am humbly suggesting that don't get confused. You know why I am telling this? No, not to make you feel bad or to irritate you, but to make you understand that this type of over knowledge is dangerous in the exam hall. Whereas a fool like me, you know, he will read it correctly and he will write correctly. A highly intelligent person like you only will go wrong. <laughs> that is why I am saying be careful. Okay. So, we have answers. Most of, see, in case the company is incorporated on 11th February 20, see, basically, ma, normally, listen to me, normally, the financial year should end on 31st day of March every year. So, in this case, the company was incorporated on 11th December. Now. When should the company hold its AGM? Next year, 31st March 2022. No problem. Okay, sir. You bring it under the exception, sir. 
what does it say where a company is incorporated on or after the first day of january every year it will end on the 31st day of march following year same logic even you apply the exception rule even if you apply the exception rule it will come it will be on 31st march 20 31st march 22 okay 31st march 22 okay are you able to understand when it is when the company is incorporated on 11th december 21 That was March twenty-two. No problem. If it is incorporated eleventh of February twenty-one, in between there is one thirty-first no, March. No, it's more rate. It will become straight away thirty-first March twenty-two. Okay, thirty-first March twenty-two is the correct answer. Okay, somebody has written ninth November twenty-one. What is the logic of that? Are you confusing with that nine months thing? No, no, sir. Nine months is for holding AGM. The AGM who who wrote nine month nine months? No, sir. Ha! See, ninth November. How do we get Abhishek Ji? See, financial year should end only on thirty first March. Na financial year should end only on thirty first March. Where a company is incorporated on or after first January, then financial year will end on the next day. So when the company is incorporated on eleventh February. You cannot have it on 31st March 21. It has to go to 31st March 22. If it goes to 31st March 22, then the AGM will be held the first year, na. So the AGM will held within nine months. Yeah, that was December 22. That's all. The answer will be the same. <laughs> the answer will not change. That is the correct answer. What have they asked you? Would your answer be the same? Yes, it will be the same. If it is 11th February 21, also the answer will be 31st March 22. And that was December twenty-two. I'll check your answers, sir. We we don't be in a hurry. Within nine months after that was March twenty-two. Correct. That is that was December twenty-two. Why are you saying within nine months? The last date when that that nine months would end is that was December twenty twenty-two. That is the correct answer. If you are asking me, but if you are catching me by the collar and saying is my answer right, then I will say no. Your answer is not right. What I am expecting is that was December twenty twenty-two. I don't have. Don't make me count nine months. You tell what is that ninth month? That is number. Hmm? Got it? But now that you ask me again and again, you are asking me. I am giving my answer. Okay. No, you should be more accurate. Is the correct answer I am giving? It is not wrong, but I am unable to say that your answer is correct. So it can be. It is incomplete answer. I would say that you should say, as the company was incorporated on eleventh February twenty twenty one, according to the exception to section ninety. Uh, two forty one. Then the financial year will end on the thirty uh, first of March of the following year, which is which means the financial year would end on thirty first March twenty two, and the first AGM should be held within nine months, which is thirty first December twenty twenty two. Therefore, the answer will not change. Is that correct? Okay. And I'm just joking. Sometimes, Parth, I'll become very emotional. Relax. Don't worry. Boss, I am an emotional person. It has been good and bad. Being emotional, I take things very, very it's seriously, and I do achieve and all. But sometimes you also become the weakness when you are not able to handle. Uh, so you just become you talk a little casually, and that casual talk, you know, sometimes uh, uh, people don't like. But I am sure you are my beloved students. You do not mind my the way I talk. What is not what is what the way I talk, but what. Whether you have understood this topic, because I still see a lot of confusion. That is why I am giving a concrete example. Ninth, eleventh December twenty one. Financial year will end only on thirty first March. No other date. Ninth November is wrong. I hope the person who wrote ninth November, please confirm to me that you have understood. Ninth November is nobody's date. The financial year, if it is eleventh December, will end on thirty first March twenty two. Thereafter, you count nine months, which means thirty one twelve twenty twenty two is the date by which the AGM should be held. Got it? If it is eleventh February, then the exception applies. The exception says, if it is eleventh February, then again the financial year will end at on thirty first March of the following year. Is that it is clear? Okay. No. Good. 
Very good. Abhishek Bajpayee also. And thank you. See, Abhishek Ji, I'm happy that you put that answer. Now, you, now I know that I have I have miscommunicated. Somewhere this nine months has created a problem for you. Now you are clear. Now that is important. Good. Because these are all questions which they could ask in the exam. Very straightforward questions. And which easily you can answer if you know what is to be written. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Hanuman Ji. Now, ah, we come to the great accounting standards. The items contained in the financial statements shall be in accordance with the accounting standards. Once upon a time, the accounting standards were not recognized by the Companies Act. But the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, being a signatory body okay, to the International Accounting Standard Foundation, they had to comply with it. Okay, so International Accounting Standard Board, they had to control, comply with it. And as a member, the minute I become a member, automatically I am I'm, I'm saying I will comply with the Institute. Whatever the Institute says, I have to do, including accounting standards. So whenever an accounting standard is published, approved by the Central Council, it's binding on me. I have to obey it. But the company need not. I'm talking about long, long ago, 90s, post-liberalization era, the Companies Act 1956 did not recognize the accounting standards. <laughs> in a prescribed by the Institute which means we were at that time in a very peculiar position where the auditor who is signing the balance sheet has to comply, has to ensure that the financial statements comply, but the company is not bound. They, at that time, SEBI was also not very active. So I'm talking about 80s and 90s, 70, 80s, 90s, almost the time when I was preparing for my exam, cleared and all, there was no SEBI, nothing, and no, it was not compulsory. Then suddenly in the 1956 Act, they introduced, they introduced around 97, I think, 97, 98, they introduced. They said accounting standards are 99 my ordinance. They said accounting standards are compulsory. You have to comply with the accounting standards. Every company shall comply with the accounting standards. Now that is continuing here in this section also. They say the items contained in the financial statements shall be in accordance with the accounting standards. Now, only one exception, they say the government company need not comply with accounting standards 17, provided such a government company is engaged in defense production. So only those government companies which are engaged in defense production, segment reporting one. Obvious reasons now. This will be information for our enemy countries now. Suppose we are giving information, how many tanks we are producing, how many artillery, how many fires. Uh, you know, aircraft, warcraft you are preparing, it will be information to them, no? So, no need to give all that. Okay, is the point. Of course, I, it's, it's a good one. It's a, it's a very important uh, exemption, but that's about it. Otherwise, all companies have to comply with accounting standards. Except AS3. Except AS3. AS3, three fellows need not. I mean, uh, one person company need not. Small company need not. Dormant company. See, somebody was asking about dormant company. Well, that is dormant company would be um, a sort of uh, a company which has had not had any financial transaction for two years. There's, see, it's in, not in your syllabus. Dormant company is not in your syllabus. It is in the final syllabus. But still, for your general knowledge, your do see, what is the meaning of the word dormant, sleeping, not alive, and not awake, but alive. So it's gone into hibernation. Deep sleep. So the dormant company is one which has no financial transaction. So what they will do, the minister, the MCA will note it as dormant. Then later on, you want to revive it. You can by going to the register, giving information, declaration, and all, and you can revive your dormant company. Okay. So dormant company is one which is not having any um, transact financial transactions, which has not filed its annual report, annual return. Uh, or the financial statement, nothing. So even the registrar, if he, find, if he feels this is a dormant company, he can declare it and show dormant. That once it becomes dormant, no, nothing can be done after that. You have to go back to the registrar, the MCA, get again revived. Okay. So accounting standards are applicable, except AS3 for these categories of companies. AS3 is not. Uh, Karthik, these things and all must be only for you because if it is a major for everybody now, nah, by now I have got huge uh, shouting in the query pad. 
So I think it's something to do with you. Just check up what is happening at your side. To my knowledge. Okay. Okay. List of accounting standard won't be there, ma'am. Whatever accounting standards are notified by the National Accounting Standard Board will automatically apply. That will be there. In the, you can go to the website. NCA website is there. In 133, come to 133 now. Wait for some time, Manish. We'll come to 133. This is 139 only, one only says accounting standards are compulsory. Let us come to NFRA. Let us come to uh, NASB, NFRA now. National Financial Reporting. Uh, authority, then you will know. So don't worry about that. Uh, as of no accounting standards, you have to comply. List of accounting standard, if you want, what is so great? You go to the institute, our board of studies, uh, uh, you know, if I mean, sorry, ICA website, you will get it. Everything is available there. Okay. So, 133 says accounting standards are those which are prescribed. That's all. Once it is prescribed, it becomes the accounting standard. One twenty nine deals with makes it compulsory that the comp company should ensure that it is complying. Earlier that was not there. Also, the guidance notes given by the institute are binding on us, but not on the company, which is still there. But we are bound by it because see, once the institute tells me something, I have to obey because I am a member. A member cannot go around playing games. It will be violating of I my mean, professional misconduct. I can't do that. But I can express my views. I can inform the institute. I can say this. Maybe it looked at differently. But so long as the institute has told to do this, I have to do it. Do it and that's it. No questioning the institute. Is the Obedience is one of the important parts of being a professional. A disobedient person cannot be a member of the Institute of Jada Guns of India. A discipline and disobedience are hallmarks of an HR accountant. So whatever the institute says is final. You cannot argue. Because that is the body we elected in. Recognized by the government of India, we cannot play with it. Yeah, uh, as far as uh, uh, not only listed companies, uh, just give me a little time. I will be coming to that part where I will be telling you which are all companies are bound by India's. Hmm? India's was introduced in a phased manner. It's a bigger story. Right now, what you need to understand, whenever we say accounting standard, if it is mandatory India's, then India's will apply. It should comply with India's. Absolutely correct, sir. It is applicable only to see whatever where a particular accounting standard exempts companies that apply that exemption will apply. Are you able to understand? When I say all accounting standards are applicable to all companies, what I meant is all companies to the extent that the standard applies to them have to comply with it. That's what I meant. Okay, maybe if you are being very particular about it, as there are certain standards which are give the example of AS3, you are giving the example of AS17. So, if any limited applicability is there, then those companies are not bound. That's all. But if it is applicable, it is applicable. That's all. Okay, is the point. You are right. You are absolutely correct. Okay. Now, if there is any deviation from the accounting standard, then it is the duty of the board. See, at this stage, we are only talking about the board. Okay. Later on, you'll see the auditor's duty also. When there is a non-compliance of the financial statement with the accounting standards, then that statement should disclose that there is a deviation from the accounting standards, the reasons for such deviation, and the financial effects, if any, of such deviation. Suppose you're adopting some method, or see, in most cases, no company will actually disobey or not comply. What they will do is they will give a different interpretation. The auditor may have one interpretation. Company may have another interpretation. If so, the company will continue to do what it does. Then the auditor will have to qualify. That comes later. We will see that. Right now, they have to disclose it. See, the beauty of this is suppose the company is doing some nonsense and trying to show more profit, whatever. This disclosure will kill it now. If any, that is why I used to tell people, must go through the notes and accounts. Go through the notes and accounts and there you will find many information is there. Rework the balance sheet based on that information. See, whatever the auditor has certified, you don't trust it. 
you you go through the notes and accounts there him there is something hidden take it out apply it on the pnl still if the company is profitable good but if suppose you apply it strictly and say suppose they have not provided for something they disclose it and say even though accounting standard wants me to do like this i have not done you redo it you do it as per the correct method and see what is the profitability then so all these window dressing gimmicks cannot work if the disclosures are given the problem is the disclosure will be worded in such complicated english imagine even when words are told to you in simple terms when same word i am explaining 100 times you know you won't read the disclosure for accounting standards god will only understand what is being told let alone you a normal human being like me nobody can understand it will be complicated english of course you see professional like me can understand but uh, seriously what i am trying to say here is a uh, aam aadmi cannot understand yeah he doesn't understand anything and uh, you but we are satisfied we have done our duty like that we are saying but the reality is aam aadmi cannot understand anything so he rejects it and then he believes the statements given by press popular press some bit notices dubakur limited is a good company by the share he goes by that rather than verifying the balance sheet of dubakur limited okay anyway so some companies which are called classes of companies which are which are special category of companies like insurance banking company engaged in the generation of electricity company governed by any other law so they are having their own enactment which gives the manner in which the accounts are to be disclosed so for example for insurance companies the irda has got a regulation there is an elaborate irda regulation on how the balance sheet of a insurance company should be presented so to the extent that the those regulations are saying there is no need to show or disclose then you need not disclose similarly for banking companies the banking regulation act says you being a banking company you need not disclose this similarly company engaged in generation of electricity all that so when the when there is a special law or a special body controlling them and they have given a separate set of guidelines or regulations those regulations will apply and what is not required to be disclosed even though as3 says you have to sorry schedule 3 says you have to disclose it you need not disclose it in these cases okay just for your information i will show you one uh, give me one minute i'll just show you this is something just for information again hmm? I, I, even if you cannot see it it is okay in a big way but just have a look at it that's all hmm? i'll maybe expand it and show it to you because sometimes uh, they say sorry oops i have IRDA. See, this is the IRDA, a financial statement regulation. If you want, I will make it a little bigger. A little bigger, I'll make it so that you can. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the regulation of the IRDA. So IRD has given clearly how it should be accounting principles for preparation of financial statements. So this is applicable only to insurance companies. Okay, so an insurer carrying on life insurance should comply with the requirements of Schedule A. General insurance, yeah, Schedule B. So Schedule A, Schedule B, all that is there. So I mean, I'm not going to. I'm only showing you that these are such things are there. for each industry so suppose tomorrow one of you wants to become an expert you become an insurance company then you become the cfo of an insurance company then you should be thorough with irda regulations completely maybe you will be an authority on irda regulations got it there irda insurance regulatory and relevant authority regulations similarly for banking companies many bankers chartered accountant bankers who are in the balance sheet section there will be in and out they will know banking regulation act and the rules and regulations for preparing the balance sheet of a banking company 
and so on and so forth. Chalo. Now, we are moving on to another topic called consolidated financial statements. Now, so CFS. Consolidation means bringing together under one head. So the holding company's balance sheet should give the some, it should swallow the financial statements of subsidiaries and associated companies. So the combined financial statements of your company and all its subsidiaries. So the entire thing goes in. Okay. So the consolidation of financial statements shall be made in accordance with the provisions of Schedule 3 of the Act and the applicable accounting standards. Okay. I'm sure you know it uh, by heart. The accounting standard. Yeah? I'm sure AS21, I think. And I'm not aware of India's. I'm sure Sunil Goel or somebody will immediately correct me and say, Sir, Suman Goel, India is so and so. Beautifully said. Vithuraj says, very humorously, saying, Dubakur Limited takes preparation of its financial statements as an art of deception. Correct. So when that happens, now if people are not willing to look at the balance sheet, how it can be? So they should be looking at the balance sheet. You as a future member of the institute, you, a little bit of your time should be spent in educating the public. Just like doctors give, you know, uh, medical information to the public in good interest. No, you should also give financial advice, not for commercial purpose, but to help people. Be very careful. You should give disclaimers and all that, but then tell them simple things of what they can do, how they can plan and things like that. Just like medical doctors are trained to give health, uh, you know, capsules for health information for public, you and I are competent as members of the institute to provide financial health, uh, you know, outputs. You can you definitely you can share. You are entitled. Once you become a member of our institute, you are entitled. Nobody can prevent you. There is nothing wrong. So long as you don't advertise, you don't violate the code of ethics relating to advertisement, etc. When some when body is inviting you, for example. I speak at a lot of chambers of commerce, entrepreneur societies and all. I speak. I talk to them about balance sheet, p and account and tell them what is what. Practically. So, you can do that. No problem. Ah, I know. Intermediate, you don't get NDAs. No, correct. Don't worry. There's nothing. It's the same. Except it's more complicated. So, you can go there. When you go to final, you will do it. But this, so, become thorough in accounting standards. So that when you go to NDAs, you will not worry. At the same time, you have to unlearn. <laughs> many, many, the differences are there. Huge differences. So, you have to unlearn. India is more like, you know, logical method of presenting. Okay. The substance over form becomes very, very important there. The substance over form rule becomes very, very important. So, what you are, what you are, what is the reality of it? Like? Many times people ask me, so what is depreciation? I say, don't go by the rate of depreciation. In simple terms, what is depreciation is nothing but the cost of the asset should be written off over its useful life. That's all. Because it's a matching concept. Depreciation is not something esoteric. It is matching concept. When an, expense is, when an expenditure will have its benefit over a longer period, it has to be split over that long period. Matching concept. That's all. So, when I buy the asset and I will be keeping it for 10 years, the cost of the asset should not be taken to P and L in one year. It has to be taken over its useful life. That is all. Once this principle is arrived at, then I use formula to find out rate, WDV, reducing balance, state line, blah, blah. All that is talk. Bottom, bottom line, what is the cost of the asset? What is its useful life? Distribute it. You cannot distribute more than the cost of the asset for the useful life by applying rates. Finally, in the last year, you'll have one rupee. That's all. You can't have anything more or zero. We are making this point even at the cost of wasting your time is Accounting is basically common sense. If common sense is applied to you, accounting is clear. It's only when you decide to let go of common sense and talk about something, then you are in deep shit. Because there, common sense will be more valuable than all this. Okay. Now, so the consolidated financial statements are uh, very important. The consolidation shall be made in the CG may provide for the consolidation of accounts of companies in such manner as prescribed under Rule 6. A company having one or more subsidiaries shall lay a consolidated financial statements along with standalone financial statements at every ATM. So, standalone financial is the company's pure, that company car. Like, you know, Tata Motors, somebody has downloaded, na? have a look. 
Tata Motors will have a standalone and also one CFS. You can check it out because it has subsidiaries. So that will be consolidated financial statement. CFS means consolidated financial statements. Okay. So CFS will have consolidated. Also Tata Motors standalone. Now, if I'm going to work with Tata Motors, then I will, I mean, if I'm going to compare with Ashok Leyland, I'll take standalone, standalone. Standalone, standalone, because I'm, if I'm comparing performance of these two guys, I'll go standalone, standalone. Okay. Then I will not see this uh, consolidation with JLR Land Rover. Yes? Not for me. So, but if you want to compare consolidated, you can compare the consolidated. See the group as a whole. Whatever. Now, the statement containing the salient features of the financial statement of a company subsidiary, associate, joint venture, etc. should be in form AOC. One. Okay, they should also provide that. The, the salient feature, not the full one, but summarized in AOC 1. AOC, accounts of companies, that's all. Don't, if you are worrying, what is AOC, sir? Oh, what is AOC? Accounts of companies, that's our MC is very highly imaginative. No, whatever the chapter name, they will abbreviate it for the form number. Okay. Provisions applicable to preparation, adoption, and audit of the financial statements of a holding company shall mutandis, mutandir apply to the, actually it should be mutandir, so okay, mutandis is mutandis, apply to the consolidated financial statements. Consolidated financial statements. Okay. So what all principles you are applying there, including accounting standard, India is, should be. Suppose a holding company is governed by India is, all its subsidiaries should prepare their accounts on the basis of India's for consolidation purpose. Okay. So all the subsidiaries should prepare based on India's for consolidation purpose. Even though the subsidiary may not be bound by India's, still it has to do it. Okay. In some cases, uh, they can avoid preparation of CFS. It's a little complicated. Let me do one thing. I will see if you can understand it good. Otherwise, we will take it up again. Some people, some students have problem in understanding this. Basically, they are saying certain companies need not consolidate. Provided members, including those not otherwise entitled to vote. Meaning, if the, if the differential voting right share, no right to vote. Even those members should not object. Members, including those, not otherwise entitled to vote. That is, they don't have the right to vote. There may be guys who are having zero vote, but only entitled driven. Can be differential voting right. Then, even those guys should not. Similarly, preference shareholders. Okay, preference shareholders are not members. Let's not go there. Differential voting rights, equity shareholders, who are not entitled to vote, also should not object in the company not presenting consolidated financial statements. And it is a company whose securities are not listed or are not in the process of listing on any stock exchange, whether in India or outside India. So what is the first condition? Members should not object, including members who are not entitled, otherwise entitled to vote, should not object. Secondly, company should not be listed or in the process of listing in India or outside India. The C is where you'll get confused. It's ultimate or any intermediate holding company files consolidated financial statements with the registrar, which are in compliance with the applicable accounting standards. It's ultimate or any intermediate holding company. So, let us say, I know this is not easy, but still let me try to do, let me also try if I can do this. C, A is there. Okay. Now, A is the holding company of B. Now, B is the holding company of C. Wow. Okay. Now, with this, let us start now. Now, A is the holding company of B. B is the holding company of C. Now, we are talking about C now. Let us say that B, I'm sorry, we are talking about B now. Okay. Now, B has to consolidate with Cena. B has to consolidate with Cena. Now, they are saying, please listen to me. We are talking about B here. B should consolidate with Cena. They are saying, B 
need not uh, consolidate b need not consolidate provided a is consolidating b and c and q are you able to understand b need not have consolidated financial statements provided a the, the ultimate holding company the ultimate holding company is consolidating see if c has if i can easily give one more subsidiary for d to explain intermediate holding company but if you where is the intermediate here because if this is the maximum that can be am i correct because they are very clear now a company cannot have more than two layers of subsidiaries you remember so the c is the limit now c there is no question of consolidation c is the consolidate d b will be the consolidator b is the intermediate holding company of c am i correct and a is the ultimate holding company so they are saying a company need not consolidate if either its intermediate or ultimate holding company is consolidating so in my in my point b need not consolidate with c provided members of b do not object including those not entitled to vote to b should not be listed or process of listing c its ultimate holding company should file consolidated financial statements it means a will consolidates b while doing so a will consolidate c also so a is consolidated financial statements will include b swallowed c swallowed also so if that is happening then again b need not show b with c and all so it's a kind of an exception for that i hope you are clear because sometimes students have a doubt whenever i explain this particular topic you no know, students get doubt they keep on saying repeat it repeat it so yeah maximum so if you are clear about it i'm happy because last time when i was teaching you no know, some students were unable to understand maybe because i did not draw this in fact many students are telling now you use the pen you draw and all i'm also going to do because i will i will learn how to do it and i will do it okay you are young only when you keep on learning okay when you say i know everything you still become buddha you say i don't know you are still young and you can go on and learn more anyway today we will finish uh, see can you give a part a example sir uh, part a now your doubt is part a pass b limited having share shareholders ma it is having equity shareholders who have voting rights it is also having equity shareholders listen to me with differential voting rights where they are getting dividend but no voting right even those people who are not otherwise entitled to vote should do not object to the company because they have no right to vote till they should not object to the company not presenting cfs consolidated financial statements so because they don't have a vote you know you cannot ignore them you have to get send the letter to them saying we are not going to give so b should send b should send to its shareholders including the, these guys differential voting rights guys who are not entitled to vote and they should not object have you understood suman you wanted why number 1 now okay yeah we i see i continue to attend uh, not certification courses and all no no see today believe, believe me my dear friend my knowledge seeking is no longer in your subjects your subjects are okay for me i can learn on my own and i can pick up knowledge as and when it comes to me i do not need to attend certificate courses sometimes i do once in a while i attend for some very specialized subjects i attend my knowledge seeking is now in a different field okay, which is not at all in it it will not help me to earn money <laughs> i'm in a different field i'm trying to get more and more insights and knowledge for which the teachers are not here they are sitting in other places of india they are waiting to teach and they won't take money they won't take they want different approach then they will teach that knowledge i am seeking so that is called apara vidya this is para vidya this is apara vidya so that knowledge is what i seek at the age of 58 i have i don't have to wait. still for some purposes yes i do it and i read a lot and i keep enhancing my knowledge certification courses once in a while it depends on the faculty for example during the pandemic i attended a investment uh, that you know that valuation course by a great man called ashwath damodaran i attended that course online it was fantastic a great experience listening to ashwath damodaran like that the, the teacher should be of the topest quality then i will go and listen it have not ashwath damodaran's uh, certification course on valuation valuation in uh, uncertain times it was a fantastic certification course 
Okay, so very good. With all respect, and that we are answered by following your advice. We need to remember various concepts are present from which X. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Excellent. So, Suman, you should do that. You find this. Thing. <laughs> Not casually. I respect every one of you. The way you are interacting, I am so happy. Please go ahead and correct me if I am wrong. I will stand corrected, but I will not stand because I am sitting. I will accept your correction. Okay. Then such class of one is maybe prescribed. Shall not have such number of layers as maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you are right. You are right. Ritraj is correct. See, C may come in that category. You got a point. Hey, valid point. So, it is not that two layers are totally prohibited. For example, banking company may have two layers. In those cases, B will become intermediate subsidiary. So, if B, the intermediate subsidiary is consolidating, then C need not consolidate with its below layers. Point is this. A subsidiary need not consolidate if it's intermediate holding company or ultimate holding company. This is intermediate, the ultimate holding Good point. Well, well said, Ritraj. I totally agree with you. Correct. Manish also makes the same point. Foreign company. If company A is a foreign company, yeah. sir, if it is a foreign company, company A is a foreign company, then Indian companies that will not apply to it, boss. Companies that will be, they will, companies that this section will not apply to such a company. Okay. Great. And uh, yeah. I think what she, Divya Kumari says is correct. Today's class was very interesting because of the questions that were raised and uh, make it more interesting. So let's meet next class on uh, inshallah um, Thursday when I will continue the topic and looking forward to meeting you. Bye. Uh, Tunishka was asking something about share capital and debentures. Allow me to uh, sort of answer it in the next class. Huh? I'll just go through it and I'll get back. Thank you. Bye.